Welcome to the last part of 7-3 notes that we're going to be doing, which is the washer method. Now, when you think of a washer, <clears throat> I hope that you're envisioning a shape that looks something like this. It's basically a circle with a hole in the middle. <laughs> so this method is going to be a lot like disk method, except with a hole in the middle. So, um, and also we're going to use this method even when the book asks us to use cylindrical shell method. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna kind of give you like a general formula like I did before and then we'll apply it to specific examples. So um, the volume of a solid generated by revolving a region bounded by two curves, which is usually what causes the washer to happen. is, now if you're revolving around a horizontal line, then you're going to integrate from A to B, which is from left to right, of pi times the big radius squared minus pi times the little radius squared. And you're going to integrate that with respect to x. So big R would be basically just the bigger radius and little r is the smaller radius. Okay, if you're revolving around a vertical line, it's the same idea, but you're integrating with respect to y, so you're integrating from bottom to top of, again, pi r squared minus pi little r squared dy. So in this first example the radius was the radiuses or radii would have to be in terms of x whereas for the other example they would have to be in terms of y okay so basically all it is is we're finding the area of these washers with the holes in the middle and the area it's basically the area of this shaded region, which would be the area of the entire circle if this were filled in, which would be pi times the big R squared. And then we're subtracting out the area of this little circle, which would be pi little r squared. And so this is just the area of the big circle minus the area of the little circle, and that just gives us the leftovers in between. So it's still, it's still like 7-3 part 1, where we're doing volume by cross-section. It's just these here represent the areas of the cross-sections. Okay, so in example 7, it's wanting us to find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by these two curves, y equaling x cubed and y equaling x, in the first quadrant, and we're going to revolve that about the x-axis. So what they have here, and it's kind of hard to see, we'll zoom in a little bit, is they've graphed the line y equals x in the first quadrant, and they've graphed the line y equals, or the curve, y equals x cubed in the first quadrant, and they intersect at 0, 0, and 1, 1. So they just took this portion, so ignore the bottom half, ignore that. They just took this region and they rotated it. They rotated it around the x-axis and that's what caused it to then basically reflect down here. And if you, and it, it makes a solid shape. It makes a solid shape and the cross sections would look like this. 
So one cross section would look like you'd have the bigger circle that goes from the center to the y equals x line. And then you'd have the smaller circle that goes from the center to the y equals x cubed line. And then it would be like this. This part's shaded in. And I know it's kind of hard to see that from the side view. Because you're, you're thinking that this is curved and this is straight, so these aren't going to be these aren't going to be equal distant from each other, but in fact they are because we're just looking at one point. We're just looking at one slice, just one slice. So these are going to be a varying width, like the shaded region is going to be a varying width, but each cross section will look like this. A bigger circle, a littler circle, or a smaller circle, excuse me, inside a bigger circle, and the shaded part would be the part in between the two circles. So the area of this cross section would equal pi times big R squared minus pi times little r squared. So big R goes from the center to the tip of the big circle. That's big R. Whereas little r just grows from the center to the smaller circle. That's little r right there. So big r, pi times big r squared minus pi times little r squared. Now if you look at this graph, big r is basically just equal to x. It's just the distance from the center, from the x-axis up to the line y equals x. So that's just x. Whereas little r is the distance from the x-axis to the curve y equals x cubed. And since they intersect at 0 and 1, we're going to integrate from 0 to 1. And let's go ahead and factor out the pi because it just makes life a little easier. So the pi times big R squared, which is x squared, minus little r squared, which is x cubed, squared. And then that's in terms of x. And then for me, I like to evaluate. I like to pull the constant out. Makes my life easier. So it's just x squared minus x to the sixth dx. So the antiderivatives would be x cubed over 3 minus x7 over 7. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 1. So that's pi times 1 third minus 1 seventh minus 0. So it's pi over 3 minus pi over 7. So this would be 7 pi over 21 minus 3 pi over 21. So we're going to be left with 4 pi over 21 units cubed. OK, so that's our answer. Whoops, I meant to zoom out. For example, 7. So we just took the area of the larger circle, that's pi times x squared, minus the area of the smaller circle, pi times x cubed squared and then just integrate all that. Okay, so now let's go to the next example. So this one's a little more challenging because instead of revolving around the x-axis, we're revolving around the line y equals two, which is still a horizontal line, so I'm still gonna integrate with respect to x. Okay, I just, I can't, I have to be really creative when finding the radius. Okay, so we're evolving this region. So let me zoom in again here so we can see what's going on. Okay, so this is the curve x cubed, this one here. And then this is the line y equals x. And we're taking this and reflecting it or rotating it around the line y equals 2. So notice that it has to be equal distant, okay? Because it's kind of also like reflecting it over the line y equals 2. Like y equals 2 is kind of like a mirror. But the, the difference is that we are rotating all the way so you have these circular cross sections. And these are going to be circles with holes in them. Okay, 
So what you got to do is you got to find big R. Okay, so big R is from the center of the shape all the way to the far edge of the shape. And maybe we'll look at it going down. Center of the shape all the way to the far edge. So remember, from the line to the, to the x-axis, the distance from the line to the x-axis is 2. The distance from this bottom curve to the x-axis, that distance is x cubed. This little distance right there. So that means the distance from this line where I rotated, which is basically the center of the shape, from there to the edge of the curve would be a distance of 2 minus x cubed. So 2 goes from the top all the way to the bottom. x cubed just goes from the curve to the bottom. So from the, t from the center to the curve would be 2 minus x cubed. So that's big R. Okay, now we got to find little r. Little r is from the center to the closer curve. Okay, from the center to the closer curve. Now again, I'm still going to do 2 minus because I still have, I'm still going from 2. I sh I'm not going a full distance of 2 because that would go all the way to the bottom. But I'm going to subtract off the distance from the straight line to the to the x-axis. And that distance from the straight line to the x-axis, that distance right there from here to here, is x. So I'm basically going to do 2, which is from the line to the x-axis, from here to here, minus x, which is from here to here. So 2 minus x would leave just this portion from the line y equals 2 to the line y equals x. And that's the shorter radius. Okay, so then the volume is the accumulation of all of that area. And notice we're going to go from 0 to where these two functions intersect, which is at 1, 1. So really quickly, let's set x equal to x cubed. And then we solve by subtracting x to the other side. And then we factor out an x, and we get x squared minus 1. So they intersect at the point 0, negative 1, and 1. But since we're only looking at the first quadrant, then we'll just get rid of the negative 1. So they intersect at the point 0 and 1. So that's what we'll integrate from left to right. That's the, this point right here is 1, 1, and this is 0, 0. So we're going to integrate from 0 to 1 of pi times the big radius squared minus pi times the little radius squared dx. So simplifying that a little bit, you can factor out a pi, and we get 2 minus x cubed squared minus 2 minus x squared. Okay, and let's go ahead and evaluate this one on the calculator. So, let's we'll be careful here. So we'll go math, f n i n t, pi, times 2 minus x cubed quantity squared minus 2 minus x quantity squared parentheses. Let me make sure I close all the parentheses and then comma x from 0 to 1. And so it looks like our volume is approximately 2.543 units cubed. And then by f n i n t. Okay, so that one was definitely a little trickier finding those radiuses. That's really the tricky part. Once you find the radiuses, it's a piece of cake. Pi times the big R squared minus pi times little r squared. Okay, so I'd like you to pause the video at this point, try this one out, and then come back and check in and see how you did.
first thing I hope you noticed in your attempt at this problem is that we're revolving it around the y-axis, which means we're going to integrate with respect to y. So it might help to get this in terms of, oh no, this one's good. We might want to get this one in terms of y. So x is positive or negative square root of y. So maybe it would help if we went ahead and sketched a graph. So graphing y equals x squared, you go 0, 0, it goes over 1, up 1, negative 1, up 1, and kind of goes from there. And then this one here, you take y and square it. So you have 0, 0, and 1, 1, but it kind of goes like that because it's like a sideways parabola. So here's the region bounded by the two curves right there. So this one here is the square root of y, and that one there is y squared. So now that we've got the region, we can kind of take off the rest. And also, notice that they intersected at 0, 0, and 1, 1. Okay, now, but we're going to revolve this around the y-axis. So we're going to swing this sucker around, so we're going to have something that kind of goes like that on this side, and, it, and you have these circular cross sections all the way down. You have this solid. Okay, so we've got to come up with big R and little r, and they have to be in terms of y. So let's zoom in on this a little bit. Big R is going to go all the way from the y-axis all the way to the furthest curve. So the furthest curve. The furthest curve was the square root of y. So big R is that distance, the square root of y. Little r goes from the center of the shape to the, sh the closer function, the closer function, which was y squared. So that's little r. So then the volume is the accumulation of all that area from bottom to top, which is when y is 0 to when y is 1, of pi times big R squared minus pi times little r squared. So if I simplify that a little bit, that would be pi times y minus y to the fourth. And then after doing some math, <laughs> After working that out, evaluating that, this one would be easy to evaluate by hand. Um, you should get 3 pi over 10 units cubed would be the final answer. Okay, and then for calc AB, we are not required to do surface area of a solid of revolution, so we're just going to go ahead and skip that one. So we are done with what we need to know from Chapter 7 actually. So I will see you guys tomorrow in class and we'll work out some of these problems as well. Please come during tutorial if you have any questions. See you then. Bye.